Hey again, this is Brian Gormley from Where in Greater DC is Dr. G. Uh, today we have got a very fun place for you to guess. Uh, again, you know, feel free to uh, email us at support at cornerstonepropertieshomeinfo.com. Uh, tell us where you think we're, uh, we're located and uh, you'll, get a, you'll get a nice little prize. Um, okay, so today we want to talk about deficiency judgments. Uh, deficiency judgments, of course, uh, in the short sale world, are when the uh, when the homeowner or the borrower um, has to uh, pay some sort of residual uh, after the short sale is done. Of course, this is the uh, uh, the dreaded uh, the dreaded topic for most homeowners, and uh, has become much more uh, public in in uh, in knowledge and, and media attention as as short sales have become more popular as well. Uh, it's important to note, I think, that there are three types of deficiency judgments possible. Uh, one is is a straight deficiency judgment, uh, and this is sort of the uh, the uh, the most uh, subversive, if you will, uh, the one that's uh, most difficult for homeowners to uh, to really internalize. And that is uh, when a uh, when a lawsuit is is filed after the short sale. Uh, and the uh, and the lender or the investor uh, is going after the homeowner for the, the difference between what's netted to the bank uh, from the short sale, or it could apply to a foreclosure as well, uh, and uh, and and what is actually owed under the note, including all the fees and and, and whatnot, legal fees and bank fees, late charges, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you don't know um, if this is uh, uh, if this is going to happen or it's not. Uh, uh, the approval letter that you get for your short sale is uh, is your only clue. Uh, but just because an approval letter um, doesn't waive the deficiency doesn't mean necessarily that the uh, lender or investor is going to pursue a deficiency. Uh, Freddie Mac, for example, uh, won't uh, pursue deficiencies on primary residences. Um, uh, even when uh, the servicer's approval letter uh, hasn't waived uh, the uh, the deficiency, um, and you just have to negotiate as best you can uh, with the investor or with the servicer to get that deficiency waived uh, in the approval letter itself. That's your only uh, sure bet uh, to make sure that the homeowner doesn't have any uh, continuing uh, recourse obligation. Uh, the two other interesting uh, deficiencies uh, that people are aware of. Are uh, of course a cash contribution and a promissory note, uh, and again, you know, you just have to offer up um, uh, what you're best able to provide to the lender, uh, and uh, you know, obviously, you want to hope that they aren't going to pursue uh, or request a, any kind of deficiency note um, or cash contribution. Uh, ways around this, of course, um, taking a hard line with the uh, with the manager, with the asset uh, a manager, supervisor. Um, also getting the buyer to contribute some money as well uh, and going going to the investor and saying hey look this is you know we can't we can't contribute anything more we're not going to do the deal we're going to walk etc and your and your foreclosure proceeds are going to be significantly less to the extent that you can calculate the expected foreclosure and net proceeds to the investor that's always helpful uh, to to making your case it's difficult sometimes for most people to calculate that because they don't have all the information but you know, in general, rule of thumb in this area, 65, 70% of the fair market value, uh, pretty, pretty fair uh, estimate. Sometimes it's even less uh, if the property's in bad condition, in a bad location where there aren't many buyers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, do the best you can, and uh, you know, obviously you're advocating for, for the homeowner and for their, for their peace of mind. Uh, it really is a big relief when uh, you can tell the homeowner, hey, look, we've got an approval letter here and there is no promissory note, there is no uh, cash contribution, and there is no uh, recourse liability. It is important to note as well that, um, uh, that uh, in the three states uh, and jurisdictions in this area, Virginia, Maryland, and D.C., they're all recourse states. So, uh, you know, unlike some areas, for example, California, where uh, for a primary residence, uh, first lien purchase money loan, there would not be any recourse uh, from a from a foreclosure. Uh, you know the the, uh, the homeowners around here are subject to recourse. In other words, the uh, the bank can go after them for the difference. So uh, the short sale is a, a great option for people when they're trying to avoid that foreclosure. Uh, they can get at least a bite of the apple to uh, to avoid the deficiency as well. Okay, so uh, that's it for now. Feel free to check us out on our blog legalgoto.com. Uh, connect with us at uh, uh, Facebook at Cornerstone Properties and Financial Services or 
or just Brian Gormley. And uh, I look forward to talking to you later. So long.